How you guys doing? This is Neil from iPaintGirls.com and so I thought I would go ahead and do another Let's Paint. In this case it's Let's Paint Miss Marvel. And so here it is from the beginning now. just wanted to show what the end result looks like first. So uh, what I do this time is I start out doing the like bean bag thing. It's basically like a peanut shaped bag. You can just kind of warp it and bend it and uh, you really want to just keep the bend in the middle. Anyway, starting out with that technique first really helps you to you know, get more dynamic pose to whatever you're doing. And it's just a quick way to get something on paper. You know, once you have something to work with, you can see what's wrong and you can start correcting it. And so I recommend when you're when you start to sketch, don't, you know, don't try to sketch the end result, you know, if you're working from your head. Even if you're looking at something, you know, get get the framework down first and then look at it. Look at the proportions you can see what's wrong and then start to fix it. You know, as long as you have something on paper to begin with, even if it's a stick figure, you can start to fill it out, you know, and then you can figure out what's wrong with it from there. So you can see uh, I, I decided to move her top because I had it moved to the left. I decided I'm going to move it, twist her very, very top to the right. And then uh, just keep in mind the body is like the hips and the, and the breast. The breast can turn the opposite way of the hips. In the, in the center where the belly button is and stuff, that is your uh, core where it's twisting. So the top can twist one way and the bottom can twist another way. Right, uh, I noticed their legs were too short before so I actually made them longer. I just erased them and made them longer. At this stage though you really want to make sure everything looks good, that your proportions are right, you know, the, the arms and the shapes of everything look correctly. Once you got all that down then you're ready to start your actual drawing. And just depending, just depending on the pose, this this stage can take me a long time. It really does depend on the pose. Like this pose wasn't too difficult, so I nailed it down pretty quickly because I've done poses similar to this before. But if it's a pose that's really strange, like a weird back pose or something, like kind of the front's kind of twisted, sometimes those poses I haven't done them a lot could can take me a while to get it down. I might even need to get a reference to get it looking well looking good the way I wanted to. So I just about got I just about got the uh, framework down. This is this the loose sketch to get the framework down if I have something to work on. Once I have that down I just trace right over it. It's best if you have a light box but if you don't you can just you know I'm using regular print paper and so as long as you do your under one dark enough then you can see what you're doing on top of it. I just need the general guidelines. I just need to be able to see a little bit through the paper. And I'm just kind of erasing it a little bit for I can kind of see what I'm doing more when I, when I go to trace over it. Now at this stage here, it's where you put your final polish on. You know, once, once you're tracing over the image, it's just all about putting your final polish on it. This is where you want to do your, your line work really nice and stuff. We're not there yet. I'm just finish up her little waistband and her little Z thing. Now what I do with that, that little Z or Thunderbolt thing, whatever you want to call it, it's a really it's a really cool design for a suit because the way it uh, crosses over the breast like that gives you a perfect opportunity to use the curves of that design to show her breast shape. And so don't just draw it straight, you know, draw it curved as it's warping around her breast as it would be in real life that serves two purposes. One, it's realistic, but two, it helps define the form. Any, when you're designing costumes and stuff, you want to think of ways you can help define form. This is typically why costumes are designed the way they are, is they help define the form. So anything you can do to help define the form is awesome. That is curved lines that go across the form. So like at the arm, you want something like a glove or something that makes a, a cylinder line so you can see the arm is cylinder shaped. You know, you want to be able to define the form that way. So now I'm just uh, sketching in her hair. I just like some loose lines uh, to go by. You know, I pretty much when I do the sketch, sketching the hair, it's pretty much what I want it to be in the end, except, you know, the lines aren't all cool and smooth. They're more sketch, sketchy lines. Right, so now I do the final line work. At this stage here, it's really just a matter of focusing on your lines. Yeah, everything's already down for you, so you don't have to think about proportions and all that. All that's done. 
Now you're just thinking about cool shading, cool cross cross hatching, whatever techniques you decide to use, and nice clean lines. And it, it takes practice to get line your lines down. There's a couple. There's like three different ways you can, you know, do your lines. There's my part of my half of my face. I look weird from that angle because it's like the camera's like really close to my head and it's directly above me. So it's like making everything look huge close to the camera, you know, because of the forest perspective in the camera. But yeah, it looks I look funny like that from that angle and that close to the camera. It's weird. And so, like I said, there's a couple different ways to get nice line work. One thing you want to do is practice using your wrist and your fingers. You want to be able to practice just doing short straight lines, like parallel to each other. Just go one, two, three, four, like that. Get really good at that. And then practice doing curved lines. You know, you want to be able to do a nice, you want to be able to do your lines and like just smooth and then where you can go back over the same line and make it a little bit thicker, a little bit thicker, a little bit thicker without making a second line where it's only strengthening the line you already laid down. That way your line work looks sharp and clean. It takes a lot of practice. So I didn't I didn't know how the top of Miss Marvel's shirt looked. And so I had to go find a reference that showed the top of it. And then I finally uh, found one. Her shirt her shirt uh, look from what I can tell looked like it went all the way up or her suit, you know. It looks like it goes all the way up to her neck. So I went ahead and did it that way after I draw the Z in there and then I go ahead and erase it and bring it all the way up to the top of her neck. I decided I'm going to use basically four four different shades. The darkest shade I'm using for her suit. So this is the black suit. And then uh, the next lightest shade is the highlights. So it's a little bit of, it's a, kind of a grayish color, just a little bit of color. And that is for the highlights inside of her suit. Because I don't want them to be like perfectly white. Except for the brightest, brightest highlights in the suit, I did leave white. And then um, I do one more shade. Actually, it's only three shades. The white of the paper is I count as a shade, but the other third light is, is a third light's color. It's just really, really light pencil work on her body, on her skin tones. So it's the shading on her body. So I just do really, really light uh, shading there. You could actually just use the smudge stick for that too. That's what I usually do, but I didn't do that this time. I did use a smudge stick toward the end for like this smoke stuff coming around her. Oh, what's cool though is my new computer allows me to record at the biggest setting on my webcam. So I can, you know, have a nice high definition and it doesn't skip a bunch of frames. It records at 15 frames a second. Unfortunately, that that's just, that's just, you know, at the highest setting, which looks the best. It only does 15 frames a second. Like that's the, that's the camera itself, not my not my computer. The camera itself puts a limit. I wish it did 30 frames a second at that at that size, but it doesn't. Now her legs to me look a little bit short, but not in the paper. I think it's because my camera's at a slight angle, and since it's at a slight angle to the paper, it makes her look a little bit shorter than she actually is. But her uh, her legs actually don't look quite that short in the drawing. So I had some trouble with her feet because I put that leg that leg behind the leg, and I was like, okay, wait a minute, <laughs> what way what way would the big toe be now? So for the shitting the legs, what I do is I first draw the streak, the highlight. As it's gonna as it's gonna appear, and I you know I do a few like um, little points like little I don't know how to describe it like little lightning bolts within the streak, so to speak. You can kind of see what it looks like what I'm talking about, like where the wrinkles would would appear, you know, like the wrinkles would be going over the streak, you know, and it just it adds some coolness to it when you do that. It's a quick way to get highlights without having to worry so much about what you're doing. Just kind of throw a few zigzags in the, in the highlight, and that you know looks like wrinkles. You want to do that around the joints, basically, and anywhere you think that might there might be some wrinkles. 
for her cloth, I decided to use a really different shading technique to make it stand out from everything else. I made it like square and hard shapes, a lot of angled shapes rather than curved shapes. And I think that made it stick out more than everything else, rather than trying to do a different shade or whatever. You also want to be careful that you notice the hair where it connects to the, where the where her arm's dark. I have the hair light right next to the arm, but where the, her arm's light, I have the hair dark. And um, typically, is what I, I do that. I didn't do that everywhere, but it does help the forms that are overlapping each other not blend in together. Right, so that's it. I'm done. Please visit my website, iPaintGirls.com. The link is in the description. Please rate and comment things.